Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Corbin Russwin. This is their part number 1000-118-A01-6-HP. It's a 613. There's nothing more that I that I love than a long part number. That's a good one. Um, cylinders are going to be long and actually um, this would be a good length for a cylinder, although there's no keying information included, so that part number can can get a little longer. So for that really long part number, at the end of the day, this is a standard, regular, run-of-the-mill mortise cylinder. Nothing unusual about this, it's just a mortise cylinder. But what's nice about that part number is that, and we're going to, as you dissect the part number, you can understand how you can build a, a part number that would accurately reflect your requirements. So this is a 118, that's inch and an eighth. <clears throat> so just the quick view, review of this typical mortise cylinder. Uh, it's O-bitted or zero-bitted, no cuts on the key, <clears throat> which is what will happen unless you specify otherwise. Uh, probably a added cost for specifying otherwise, but nonetheless, that can be accomplished. Inch and an eighth. From the back of the uh, underside of the head of the cam, uh, pardon me, from the underside of the head of the cylinder to the back of the cam is where the inch and an eighth comes in. So this is a 1000 series. That means a standard conventional uh, mortise cylinder that you would use in countless applications. Everything from mortise locks to exit device trim to key switches to aluminum storefront to anything. You know, alarm bypass will take a mortise cylinder, whatever you're using. Um, this as. You could use this as a cylinder for a deadbolt. If you had a deadbolt that took a modular construction that would take uh, mortise cylinders, there you go. The 118 again is the length. You can order cylinders from Adam, Adam's right, you can order cylinders from Corbin Russwin in all sorts of lengths. You want to be sure that you're ordering the correct length of cylinder, inch and an eighth, where they're using this, very likely in a mortise lock, you know, um, possibly in a aluminum storefront. No, no, let's back up. In a mortise lock, and the tip-off is the A01. That's the cam. We're going to look at that cam. That's a typical uh, Corbin Russwin cam that's going to work with the majority of their conventional function, meaning their standard function mortise locks. There will be some mortise locks, a couple of functions that require a different cam, and then whatever else you're going to stick this into, someone else's mortise lock, aluminum storefront, a key switch, alarm bypass, you're going to need to change that cam most certainly. There are scores of cams available. There are probably who knows how many, but every cam has a different, every cam will give a different behavior out of the cylinder because as that center line of pivot moves and the width of the cam, the width of each of these peaks the depth and width of the valley and the height of this beaver tail portion, just to use some uh, old timer slang, uh, absolutely governs whether or not this will operate the lock that you're working with. Okay, You very likely will have a, uh, a lock with a deadbolt function and you know you might be able to retract the latch bolt but then that deadbolt has a yoke on it. So what happens is You've got the two little posts and then their beaver tail. Well, that's going if my thumb is the beaver tail, that's going to come in and drive, kick that over, and, and the outside end is going to assure that it completes. Like that. The dimensional properties of that relationship are absolute uh, in the sense that it has to be right. Um, have I made cams in the past uh, because I needed to for whatever reason? Yes, all often. Lots of time on a bench grinder making a cam work. Someone comes in with a, uh, a lock and you don't have a cam for it. Um, okay, well, it looks like the standard cam will work. And as you're looking at the lock uh, operating the cylinder, you can see, well, it's just a little too long. So let's put that on the bench grinder. Um, so you can always take material away uh, to make that work. But there's probably going to be no need to do any such thing with Corbin Russwin. They're a company who has been in business for at least at least 150 years, probably 170 years. 
So there's very likely a cam that's going to work what you're working on. That's the A01. Now the dash six, that means it's a six pin cylinder. It's drilled six, it's pinned six, okay? You can order five pin, you can order seven pin. Six pin length blanks as well. That leads us to the next part, which is the H5. This is actually stamped H5. This is in their H series DH class uh, keyway. This is part of an H series that has, I believe, about eight keyways in it. It's a multiplex structure. This happens to be an H5. I have a master ring Corbin Russwin back behind my desk that it's an H4, um, you know, etc. And we're going to look at that keyway as well. The last portion is 613. That means oil rub bronze. This scalp plate is a very thin piece of architectural material, brass, that has an oil rubbed process done to it. The cylinder plugs are, as a rule, available only in a satin brass or a satin chrome, and that's because the finishing process on this material, um, you know, they, they don't apparently want to get into trying to plate or finish cylinder plugs because the tolerances are, this is where the term absolute comes in. That needs to be within a ten thousandth of an inch, if not finer. So you can't powder coat that plug without completely sealing the interior broaching of the cylinder, which I think is technically possible, but at what cost? Um, so you're going to have a satin brass plug on an oil rubbed face cylinder. That is industry wide. You won't get it any other way. The one thing that I would ask Corbin Russwin to change is all of this was in this bag. The keys were inserted in the cylinder. On the perimeter, you're going to get some contact of the metal to the brass and the finish. That was probably there before they shipped. The point is, is they need to isolate all of the parts. There is also a cylinder collar that's included. Okay. Spring-loaded cylinder collar that will allow you to bring that down to, you know, probably 7, uh, 15 sixteenths maybe. Yeah, 15, uh, 7 eighths, 15 sixteenths, depending on if you go that one more rotation. Speaking of rotation, this is a uh, 1 and 5 30 second diameter mortise cylinder, 32 threads per inch. 1.15, 32 threads per inch, industry standard. However, there are other sizes of cylinders. There's to be no doubt about that. Hold on. I don't know that I have one in my pile, but there are peanut cylinders. Those are three quarter inch. Actually. talk about cylinder diameter. Okay, talking about different cylinders, 1 and 5 30 second, also known as 1.15. There's a 3 quarter inch peanut cylinder. They exist. I understand. I don't think that I have one. I, I believe that I don't, although I might. Uh, I think Yale made one that you would have seen in specialty applications, specialty locks. We're talking like a hundred years ago. Peanut cylinders were also fairly common in aluminum storefront mid-century, three-quarter diameter. Well, there's two other sizes of cylinders that you will run into. Well, maybe you won't, uh, but there are two other sizes of cylinders. That's master ring. That's inch and a half diameter. Okay, much larger diameter. This happens to be a three-inch master ring cylinder. So talking about length, yeah, Corbin Russwin can, can certainly do it for you in terms of length. I think that's three inch. Um, now, the inch and a half, that is what we would call builder's hardware, conventional builder's hardware. Um, Master Ring, just quickly, is a platform or a technology of cylinder construction from about 1889. I forget, Edward O'Keefe uh, is the person who invented that. He basically assigned the patent to the P.F. Corbin Company. And the reason that it is important um, and was the master ring cylinder dominated in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s. The Empire State Building 
was all Cor PF Corbin, all mastering when I built it. Um, the reason is, is because there are two shear lines. So without getting too deep into the woods, having a single shear line in a cylinder like this, between the plug and the housing, or the shell, everything that I'm going to key is at that single shear line, including a master key. It is possible, with a little bit of knowledge, that you can derive a master key if you have just a working key for the cylinder. Okay. With a master ring, you have two shear lines. So the concept is you pin your master key at the master ring, your plug shear line to the inside of the master ring sleeve is isolated from the master key biddings. You cannot derive a master key with a little bit of knowledge in that sort of platform. It has substantially died off. The factory still supports it as there are still installations that have it. I ordered this uh, probably in the middle of 2019. It took, it's a factory order, but they certainly delivered it. Now, having bragged about the master ring a little bit, if you like the medium, you should try the large. This is what's called a mogul cylinder. That's a two inch diameter cylinder. Um, standard in detention work. This is an ASA cylinder. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is an ASA key. ASA is a uh, company, part of ASA Abloy, that makes uh, a sister company. ASA is a, technically a sister company to Corbin Ross. When they have a side bit milling where it is the sidebar itself that changes uh, with the uh, sidebar, with the, with the pins that run in this side bit milling that's here. So being detention work, called a mogul cylinder, two inch in diameter. Uh, yes, most definitely standard that you'll see a security keyway. So in the world of cylinders, you can talk about your fancy inch and a quarter, but there are others that exist. Anyway, a fun little diversion there for a moment on cylinder size. Uh, 613, we talked about that. Obviously, every finish uh, that's you know available from Corbin Russwin, you can do on the face of a cylinder. Um, you know, your chromes, your bronze, your brasses, you know, satin, polished, you know, uh, things of that nature. Let's switch to the screen view where we can take a look at some supporting documentation for this item. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at. Not a lot here to see, just gives us our part number really. 1000, inch and an eighth, A01 cam, six pin, H5 keyway, 613 finish. The fun really starts at the link to the manufacturer's page here. And that's handy because it will allow us to pull up not only the product catalog, but what I like to do is also look at the price list because sometimes the price list allows us to have a deeper understanding of what we're working on as well. So that full product catalog, uh, we've got that, we have that open. We can search this document by 1,118, 1,000-118. It will find all of the instances of where that cylinder shows up. It's listed here with an A03 cam, here for the DL4100 series with an A07 cam. And etc. You get the concept that it is a conventional six pin cylinder. Does show up many, many times though in the in the in the product catalog. So the point is it's a very handy way to see all of the instances of where it falls into place. That A01 cam is used on these ML 2700 series mortise locks and and many other places. You know, when you're dealing with a standard more to cylinder like this, it is most certainly going to show up in many places. Okay, Cylinder dogging it's used in. You'll need a different cam for that apparently, an AO2 cam, but cylinder dogging it would be used in. ED5000 devices it's used in. And this does basically tell us it's a six pin inch and an eighth straight cam. Uh, pardon me, inch and an eighth six pin. Doesn't tell us it's a straight cam. Uh, tells us that it is a A02 cam. In this case, we're not dealing with an A02. Let's, now that we've established in the book what it's what it actually is, we can do the same sort of search 
in the price list and that's handy because it does allow us to further focus in on what we're dealing with you know where it shows up here is that it's an inch and an eighth cylinder available in lots of different finishes up here polished brass satin brass polished bronze and satin bronze oil rub bronze powder coated oil rub bronze equivalent polished nickel satin nickel black polished chrome satin chrome polished stainless satin stainless 722 722 is a um i think it's a dark bronze some sort of venetian bronze oh black oiled satin brass so um black oxidized bronze is what that comes up as black suede powder coat white suede powder coat you can't do a seven pin because it's too short you got to go to a longer cylinder like inch and a quarter inch and three eighths inch and a half inch and three quarter two two and a quarter two and a half two and three quarter three three and a quarter three and a half three and three quarter okay so you can do lots of lengths in that cylinder uh, let's take a look at the A01 uh, cam. Let's actually type in A07 because what I want to find is the sheet where the cams are listed in the catalog. I'm hoping to be able to find a. I think I passed it. Okay, so obviously we have an A01. This is on mortise cylinder cams section of the catalog cylinder accessories and this document it's the 835th page this is going to be for corbin russwin and arrow and marks 5000 pdq for steel from corbin russwin steel case mortise locks except classroom and institutional privacy functions deadbolt functions of green cast iron mortise locks that will work with not for master ring if you recall, our master ring cylinder was quite large. You'd need a larger cam to go along with it. All mortise functions using a cloverleaf cam. That reference tells us also that if you have a alternate manufacturer, and they tell you, when you get the cylinder for our lock body, make sure it has a cloverleaf cam. When they say that to you, they mean a Corbin Russwin A01. An example of that would be uh, I've provided people with mortise locks made by Accurate uh, in Connecticut. They are a manufacturer who makes standardized material, but they're really known for their capability of creating customized material, such as, and this is an actual job that I did. I did hardware for the air traffic control tower in Doha, Qatar, and they had two mortise locks of, of, of all of the skids of hardware that we shipped. There were two mortise locks that were were standard except they were required to have two separate keys operate the lock meaning i said that wrong you had to have two different keys in order to operate that lock a person with one key only could not open that door and that was the door leading to the air traffic control tower so think of it as a guard key and a renter key if it's a safe deposit box the guard key will solve part of the internal requirement, and then the renter key will allow the actual unit to work. You use one key to set up the arrangement of the internal mechanism, and then the actual the operating key governs locking and unlocking it. Um, went to Accurate for that, and those locks were really expensive. In about the year 2010, they were about $7,500 each, um, and they work great. Accurate said, make sure you supply cylinders with a cloverleaf cam. So there you go. This is the cylinder cam we're looking for, cloverleaf. It's the term that's used. It means Corbin Russwin uh, in this case. They can do cams for other people, older mortise locks or different functions. Adams Wright, funny deadbolts, Adams Wright, Schlage, deadbolts as well. This is a Falcon, is it? Uh, no, it's Master Ring for mastering locks manufactured after 1993, you know, etc. You get the concept here. The cams are important. Um, then we talk about six pin and um, that might be nice to be able to look at it in the sense of 
the section of the catalog that has the key blanks in it, which I'm going to find. And I, of course, did locate that. It's in the, um, well, I located in the pyramid key system section. Um, the key blank itself, um, the, the keys that come with this, they would be, a, if you were to order blanks, it would be an H5 6 pin 1 0. The 1 0 is coined on one side and blank on the other. A very common key blank also to order is a 1 2 where it's coined on one side and do not duplicate on the other. Okay, so that's just an interesting way to find out what these key blanks are. And as you can see, you can order them in five, six, or seven pin, whatever the system is. And then your keyway. See pages 31 to 40. And by the way, that was on the 824th page of this document. We get to pages 31 and 40. This document goes through many standard keyways. The restricted ones, they don't show what those profiles look like, like they would on an H5 system. So this little section of the catalog is really helpful. Um, however, all of this information that I'm scrolling past, which if you deal with Corbin Ruswin, you are going to absolutely want to have access to this data. All that you see here is absolutely trumped by what's shown in the Corbin Ruswin cylinder manual right here. Everything that I just showed you is in this manual, or everything that I scrolled past. But the importance of this document is that it is the comprehensive, um, it is the comprehensive encyclopedia as it pertains to the entire history of Corbin Ruswin up to a certain date. It's not thoroughly up to date because it doesn't have references to Pyramid or Access 3 high security cylinders. But they talk about at length uh, the entire history of Corbin, P.F. Corbin, Russell and Irwin, Corbin, Russwin, Corbin, Russwin. Um, and to successfully navigate in the world of Corbin, Russwin, this document is um, irreplaceable, in my opinion. For instance, they show us that the H series, H keyway series, which a DH class was a, was a Russ one, uh, came out of Russ one. If you were to read the history that's here, actually a little bit further past, you're, you, will, you will find more references to that. Russ one, DH class. You can do it in System 70 or non-System 70 which is in 1970, they went from a two-step system, which is non or pre-system 70, to a single-step system. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. This document will teach you how to pin this material, but it does take for granted a solid foundation of the concepts of master keying. For instance, showing you a key bidding array. Um, if you've never seen this before, you may not want to jump into this catalog immediately. You might want to read a, a manual, a book on Master King. And in fact, I can definitely suggest one. Uh, Jerome Andrews, certified master locksmith, um, wrote a book called Fundamentals of Master King. Um, they're not showing us the cover. Well, we'll just jump to the easy, easy thing. Okay, no image available. That's awful. Fundamentals of Master King. I would like to show you the cover. It's a blue cover, I believe. That I believe to be Jerome Andrews. And I do not see a picture of his book, of the cover. Okay, so the bottom line is... Jerome Andrews wrote a book called The Fundamentals of Master King. I would very much recommend it. It is going to give you basic information, assuming that you understand how to pin pin tumbler locks. Uh, and it's going to take you all the way up to basically an advanced level, leaving very little left over. And knowledge and education and literature past his book 
is of a most advanced level. So I don't know that you'd actually ever have to bump into anything beyond that. Unless, of course, you ran a key systems department at a lock manufacturer or an incredibly large locksmithing company. Um, if you want to learn more about Master King, this would be a great book. It's the, the prose in which it's written is easy to follow along and read. Highly recommended. Helped me pass part of my uh, Aloha uh, class to become a certified registered locksmith. So as we scroll through, we're going to be able to use this manual not only for the history of Corbin Ruswin, um, but also get an understanding of these different key classes. This we just talked about. How their key blanks derive. But then you're going to get into key ways and key sections in Unit 2. Well, our DH class is on... Maybe page 18, if I recall correctly. Yeah, Ruswin D and H series. So here's our H family right here. You can see it's part of a multiplex structure. There are eight keyways down here. These black silhouettes are multi-section and then all section blanks. The point of that is if you ordered an H5, if you had need to extend your master key system, there, there would be two reasons to, to behave to operate within a multiplex structure. That would be that you need to have more keyway theoretical keys available to you than one keyway can offer. A six pin uh, two step system is going to give you with a, with, a, with a master key, a total of 4,096 theoretical change keys, pre-system 70. Well, what if you had the need for 5,000? actual keys. You could take 4,096, 4,096, now you've got about 8,200. You're going to net for sure 5,000 good key numbers out of this. You can just photocopy these biddings and then cut them in an H6 keyway. The point is, this key does not enter this cylinder, and this cylinder does not enter, this key does not enter this cylinder, but the multi-section H56 will go in both. That would be the first reason. The second reason is that imagine if you had a facility where you wanted to have some sort of security, you could do that with multiplex, multiplexing and keyways as well. Imagine this, first floor, um, second floor. Um, you pin the entire first floor in H5, the entire second floor in H6, You've, you have a um, you know, uh, an attorney's office here, and then you have a design firm here. Not only do you want to prevent the keys from operating these cylinders, but you can make it so that they don't even enter the cylinder. Now, that seems like a pretty boring example, but you could use that to great effect um, if you just let your imagination think of a much larger facility. Um, you know, if you had a need for 2,000 locks, 2,000 cylinders, and you had eight different buildings or whatever, you could literally use keyways to increase the security within the system and then use multi or all section blanks. So you could cut your 5,000 keys in that first scenario on all H56 blanks. It'll go everywhere. And that's how, that's, that is why it's done. I believe that that is the reason that the multiplex idea was, would have been originally developed. Not so much to provide or prevent keys from entering cylinders in the first place. Now, the, uh, what it says here is the H series the depth and spacing data, a DH class bidding is on page 62, 63, and 65. So let's scroll down to those pages. 62, all right, here we are. This is Corbin, Ruswin, Z, and DH class system 70. This is the depth and spacing data for a, one, a single step system post-1970. If you had a file and a caliper with this data, you would be able to cut a key by hand. That's what this is for. Uh, well, that's not what it's for necessarily, but with that data, you could do that. They also have the lengths of the bottom pins, build-up pins, um, top pins for IC work, for 509 and 552 diameter plugs, whatever environment you're working in. Um, build-up pins uh, you'd be familiar with if you did IC work or master ring work from Corbin Ruswin. That's System 70. The next question is, okay, where's pre-System 70? Well, they said 62, 63, and 65. Well, this is 63. This is the M-Heart 
uh, classification. High security, discontinued, very, very interesting system of interlocking pins, fascinating. Uh, notches in the bottom, which are required as a result of the principle of the pins being interlocking. Then that 65 is going to have our pre-system 70 for the DH class Russ one. Okay, so there it is. Two-step system, which is pre-system 70. Pin lengths here as well. Fantastic document. In my estimation, in my opinion, only Medico rivals this document. Medico has their original technical manual for their original product. They have a technical manual for their Medico 3 product. And while they don't show you the keyways, they're not going to show you the broaching of the cylinder plugs, just like they don't in here with these restricted pyramid keys, which you're the owner of the system would definitely not want their keyways published, what the profile looked like. Um, they ch Medico shows you everything else. Medico, by the way, a sister company to Corbin Russwin. Uh, and their Access 3 is uh, very similar. Um, or actually, maybe I'm thinking a Sergeant. Their DG is very similar. Their series of DG. Maybe it's Access 3 as well. I, I just, I forget uh, what it is. So, um, very handy, uh, the, that, that cylinder manual. It's, it's irreplaceable. Because they've been around for so long, and because they have over the decades so many different derivatives of keyways and key systems, um, knowing what you're working on and what the rules are that govern that key class, without this document to tell you, it's literally guesswork. If you're a working locksmith, you'll certainly be able to survive, but it's a lot easier to know what you're doing when you have the depth and spacing data, which this manual includes. Determine the bidding class. Determine the depth system. What class are we in? What depth system or pre-system 70? All that is super important. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, obviously a bit of a some segues there, but you now know a lot about this system. And if you're working in Corbin Russwin, like I said, that manual is published freely by Corbin Russwin. I was in a locksmithing class last summer at Aloha, uh, and it was part of the handout, uh, part of the class materials that you were given um, in the class, you know, because Corbin Russwin is so much everywhere and has been literally since the mid-19th century. Um, <laughs> it's worth its weight in gold. Now, on that manufacturer's page, where uh, I showed you the product catalog link, etc., if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see some other links to product catalogs. You will look at P and F Corbin product catalogs. You're going to see years, 1871, 1876, 1885, and so on. If you wanted to see what Corbin, what PF Corbin was making in 1895, that's the catalog. Phenomenal. The 1905 is a great catalog um, because it has master ring in it. And... Um, you know, it was patented in 1889, took some time to get some traction, and and from then till the, till mid-century, there was just a, I think, I think a continuing groundswell of uh, mastering being quite dominant. And the bottom line is, what made it so important is that you could create huge quantities of change keys, um, because you're not handicapped by needing to shear that shear line with the master bidding. When you can take that out of it, now you're dealing with, you know, um, six pins, let's say, and you're dealing with a two-step system where you can have five possible cuts, even though you won't want to use the master bidding in every one of those chambers. Make sure that it's not included. I read a book the other day. It said, um, you know, make, hold it out in at least two positions. The quantity of change keys are tens of thousands, uh, huge amounts. And actually, if you want to hear me really blab on about this there is a video above there going on about master ring and then right above the video in the title is a link to the article that i wrote on master ring you really got to be bored to watch that one and i apologize in advance but it talks about master ring so any questions on the 1000-118-a01-6-h5-613 or any other corbin russwin product please feel free to reach out to us and thank you